So exact equations are used when we have um, a differential equation of the form And if you look at it carefully, you can see that both M and N are bivariate um, expressions. So, um, in other words, there are two variables And they are involved together. In other words, why is the independent, excuse me, dependent variable and x is the um, independent variable, but the expressions that we have in the normal form contain both x and y. So we, we call this, to be exact, If the partial with respect to y is equal to the partial with respect to x. So this is the partial derivative of m. With respect to y. And that is the partial derivative of n with respect to x. In short, we could also write this as using the subscript notation my equals nx. That simply indicates that it is the partial with respect to y which is equal to the partial with respect to x. So how do we find the solution? Um, If the condition is satisfied, if we have an exact equation, um, if the equation is exact, and there exists some function f of x comma y, that is, if the condition um, m sub y equals n sub x is satisfied, and this function um, satisfies the partial of f with respect to x would equal the function m of x comma y and the partial of y excuse me f with respect to y would equal the function n of x comma y so <clears throat> so those are the important um, things that you've got to know now we want to find the solution and we could find the solution in one of two ways. Um, let's see, perhaps I would do approach one on the left and approach two on the right. And it doesn't matter which approach you use. So approach one. So we know that the partial of x, excuse me, f with respect to x is m of x comma y. So we are going to integrate on both sides with respect to x. So integral partial f x equals integral m of x comma y 
dx. So if we have a partial derivative with respect to x, and if we integrate it, we would simply end up getting the function itself. So we simply end up getting f. And on the right hand side, we have an expression involving x and y. And from calculus 2 or calculus 3, if you have a bivariate integral, and if we integrate out one variable, we are simply left with the other variable. So that's what we will see when we do the problem. Uh, what I'm trying to say is when we integrate it, we would end up getting um, an expression in terms of y. So the constant of integration in this case would be g of y. So now we have this expression, which is f of x comma y is equal to integral m of x comma y dx plus g of y. Now, unless we find the constant of integration, we can't find the solution. So how do we find the constant of integration? Well, we know um, that the partial of y, excuse me, f with respect to y, is n of x comma y, which is right over here. So don't forget these two important expressions. So those and that. If the condition partial of m with respect to y equals partial of n with respect to x, um, is not satisfied, then it is not an exact equation. You can't use this approach to find the solution. So we know the partial of um, f with respect to y is n of x comma y. So we are going to take the expression that we found here and plug it in there. So partial of f with respect to y would equal to n of x comma y, but we know f is simply m of x comma y dx plus g of y, and that would equal to n of x comma y. So distribute the derivatives, we will have partial of integral m of x comma y dx plus g prime of y equals n of x comma y. If we rewrite this, we'll have g prime of y equals n of x comma y minus partial of the integral of m of x comma y dx. Now we have to integrate g prime of y to get g of y and plug it in to find the solution. It really doesn't matter which approach you use, um, the answer should be the same, or it will be the same, provided you did it right. So, approach two, rather starts with the second expression, which is fy equals n of x comma y. We're going to integrate both sides, this time with respect to y.
So integral f sub y dy would equal to integral n of x comma y dy. When we integrate the partial of f with respect to y, we simply end up getting f. And when we integrate a function with respect to y, we get a constant of integration, which is a function of x. Again, this goes back to calculus 2, um, where we have two variables, and if we integrate it with respect to y, the resulting answer is in terms of x. Therefore, the constant of integration in this case would be in terms of x. So now we have f of x comma y is equal to integral oops so we're just going to do things in reverse now last time we used um, f sub y equals n of x comma y. Now, if you think about it, we're just going to use the other thing. In approach one, we started with f sub x, and later we used f sub y. In approach two, we are starting with f sub y, and we are going to use f sub x. So, f sub x is equal to m of x comma y, and our goal is to find the constant of integration. So we're going to plug that in there. So the partial of f with respect to x is n, excuse me, m of x comma y. So we would have the partial of x, plug in f, which is integral n of x comma y dy plus h of x equals m of x comma y. Distribute it. So we would have distribute the partial integral n of x comma y dy integrated with respect to x plus h prime of x would equal m of x comma y. Move the expression to the other side. h prime of x would equal to m of x comma y minus the And how do we find the solution? In integrate h prime of x to get h of x. Plug it in star above, which is So, I mean, if you observe things carefully, all we did is changing m by n. If you carefully observe, the m's got replaced by n's, the x's got replaced by the y's, and so forth. So it really doesn't matter in which way or which approach you use, the answer should be the same. Key thing to notice here, it has to be in the normal form, which is this, and both m and n are bivariate it will depend on x as well as y 
it has to satisfy the condition, the partial, with respect to y of m with respect to y is equal to the partial of n with respect to x. Um, if it's not satisfied, then it is not an exact equation. We can't use this particular approach. So it's crucial to know that. So it is always best to test the problem before we get it. I mean, test to see if the equation is exact prior to proceeding. So m here is 2x minus 1. And n is 3y plus 7. So we want to look at the partial of m with respect to y. Well, with respect to y, x is a constant. So this would be 0 minus 0 m sub y, partial of m, with respect to y, is 0. Now we're going to find the partial of n with respect to x. And y is a constant with respect to x, so the same thing happens. So we have m sub y equals n sub x, so the equation is exact. So what are the functions that we have? So we have m of x comma y n of x comma y and the right hand side has to be zero that is also important um, now I'm going to use M in this problem. In other words, I'm going to use approach one. So according to approach one, um, the first step is to find F. So F of X comma Y, as we know, based on the derivation, it is the integral of M of X comma Y DX plus the integration constant g of y. So m of x comma y here is simply 2x minus 1 times dx plus g of y. And that would equal to 2 times x squared over 2 minus x plus g of y. I'm integrating. So those two would go away. I'll simply have x squared minus x plus g of y. And that is f. What was the next step in our approach? Once we found f, our approach was to go ahead and use um, n to find the constant of integration. So. We need to do g prime of y, and g prime of y was simply n of x comma y minus the partial of the integral of m of x comma y dx. So that's what we derived. So what is n? Um, of x comma y. In the problem, we identified that to be 3y plus 7. So minus m is 2x minus 1 dx. So g prime of y is 3y plus 7 minus the partial of y, 2x minus 1 dx. In this problem, things are easy. That integral is made fully of the variable x. So if I took the derivative with respect to y, it's simply going to go to zero. So 
that's gone. So we have g prime of y to be equal to 3y plus 7. And if I integrate g prime of y, I will get g of y to be equal to integral 3y plus 7, which will give me 3y squared over 2 plus 7y. And so our solution would now end up being x squared minus x plus g of y that is equal to f of x comma y. The key thing to notice here is that particular function f of x comma y would equal to some constant um, usually. So what we can do is we could write it as x squared minus x plus the g of y that we found, 3y squared over 2 plus 7y equals some constant c. That would be our solution. And keep in mind that this is an implicit solution. This problem is a bit tricky because we have m and n and both of them depend on x as well as y. So I'm going to find the partial of m with respect to y. So any time you take a partial derivative, the partial, or when you take the partial of x with respect to y, then that would be uh, zero because x would be treated as a constant. So in the first case, 2x will be a constant. Derivative of y squared is 2y. Derivative of 3 is 0. So we would have 4xy. In the second case, we are taking the partial of n with respect to x. So we would get 4x. y is treated as a constant and the derivative of 4 is 0. So we have m sub y, the partial of m with respect to y, is equal to the partial of n with respect to x. The condition is satisfied, so the equation is exact. So we can proceed with the solution. Last time I used approach 1, this time I'm going to use approach 2. In the sense, I am going to use n. So n of x comma y, keep in mind, if you're using n of x comma y, the integral has to be with respect to y. Um, last time it was with respect to x. So here, since we are using n, it is with respect to y. So we'll go ahead and integrate. Just like partial derivatives, if we are integrating with respect to y, x, all the terms containing x would be a constant. So in the first term, 2x squared is a constant and integral y dy. The second term, 4 is a constant integral of dy. So we have 2x squared times y squared over 2 plus 4y. And the constant of integration in this case is h of x. So the twos would go away and we will have x squared y squared plus 4y plus h of x. Our goal is to now find the constant of integration h of x.
So what did we do? To find h of x, we went back to um, the expression right here. Oops. We took the partial of um, f with respect to x and set that equal to m. Partial of f with respect to x would equal to m, with m of x comma y. So. What is the partial of f with respect to x? We'll have x squared y squared plus 4y plus h of x equals m. m is 2xy squared minus 3. That's okay. So take the derivative of the first term, 2xy squared. 4y, when you take the partial with respect to x, would become 0. And the derivative, partial derivative of h with respect to x is simply h prime of x. And that would equal to 2xy squared minus 3. So h prime of x is simply 2xy squared minus 3 minus 2xy squared. Those two would go away. h prime of x would be negative 3, which would imply if I integrate on both sides with respect, with respect to x, I would have h of x to be equal to negative 3x. So what we have is f of xy is equal to a constant c. That constant comes from integration. So we found f of xy to be equal to x squared y squared plus 4y plus h of x, therefore we will have x squared y squared plus 4y minus 3x equal to c. And that would be our solution. So here we have a problem where things aren't in uh, place. We want to find the m and the x properly, uh, excuse me, m and n properly. So we want to do some rearranging here. So I'm going to rewrite y prime as dy over dx, and that would equal 2x e raise x minus y plus 6x squared, which would imply x times dy equals 2x e raise x minus y plus 6x squared dx. I'm going to move x dy to the other side, 2x e raise x minus y plus 6x squared times dx plus x dy would equal, sorry, minus x dy would equal to zero. So now we have the expression in the normal form that we require, just right over there. Um, so that would be m and that would be n. So m is 2x e raise x minus y plus 6x squared. I would like to take the partial with respect to y. The first term is 2x e raise x. So if I took the partial with respect to y, that is going to be 0. 
The last term is 6x squared. If I took the partial with respect to y, that would be 0. The middle term is negative y, and if I took the derivative of negative y with respect to y, I'll get negative 1. N, so that is m, that is n. n is negative x, so the partial of n with respect to x is the derivative of n, which would simply give me negative 1. So what we have here is my equals nx, so the equation is exact. So this, that is the first thing that you've got to test. If it's not an exact equation, you can't find a solution. Um, now that we have um, established that the equation is exact, we are going to proceed and find the solution. We could either use m or we could use n. Um, I'm going to use n because it seems easy. It's just negative x. So we're going to start with n. Um, the process is to integrate n with respect to y. So and that would equal to the function f. Now you may say why am I starting with n because n is negative x and m is that giant expression and I don't want to deal with it right now. So I would have integral negative x dy. Integrating x with respect to y would imply x is a constant, so I will have negative xy plus a function of x. Now we've got to find the constant of integration. So the constant of integration is found by integrating f, excuse me, differentiating f with respect to x. So I'm going to take f partial with respect to x. But we know the partial of f with respect to x would equal to m. So that would equal to m of x comma y. So what we have here is the partial of x, partial of f with respect to x, replacing f would equal to m, which is 2x e raise x minus y plus 6x squared. So that would give me negative y plus h prime of x equals um, 2x e raise x minus y plus 6x squared. Move the y to the other side. h prime of x would equal 2x e raise x minus y plus 6x squared plus y. The y's would go away. We will have h prime of x equals 2x e raise x plus 6x squared. Now we want to find the integral um, of h prime of x to get h of x. So integrate so 
So integral of h prime of x dx would equal to integral 2x e raise x plus integral 6x squared dx. The second integral is easy. We will simply get 6 times x cubed over 3. The first integral, on the other hand, would require integration by parts, and I'm going to do that in the last page. So this is um, the problem, integration by parts. I'm going to add a page here. Could I add a page? I guess I can't. Well, that's messed up. Usually I would be able to, but okay. Well, I guess I could do it up here. So integral x e raise x dx. Um, integration by parts, u is x, v is e raise x u prime would be 1, v prime is e raise x. So, sorry, that's dv. u prime is 1, and v is equal to e raise x. The integration by parts formula is uv minus integral v du. Um, so, in our case, du over dx is equal to 1, which would imply du is dx. So if I plug it in this formula, I'll have uv, so x e raise x, minus integral v du, which is dx, we will get x e raise x minus x. Or minus e raise x. So we'll plug that back in here. 2 times x e raise x minus e raise x plus 2x cubed. That would be h of x. So we take that value and plug it in f of x, y. So we will have negative xy plus h of x, which is 2x e raise x minus 2 e raise x plus 2x cubed equals some constant c. That would be our final solution. So the integration by parts is up there. Um, Uh-oh. So, in the next problem over here, we have m to be x squared minus y squared, n is x squared minus 2xy, m with respect to y would equal to negative 2y, n partial with respect to x would be negative positive 2x minus 2y. So does it match? Well, m sub y, which is negative 2y, doesn't match 
up with n sub x. So the condition m sub y equals n sub x is not satisfied. The equation is not exact. And there's nothing we could do about it. So we move on. OK, so here we have an initial value problem. And m happens to be x plus y squared. And n is 2xy plus x squared minus 1. m with respect to y, I'm going to use chain rule. So 2 times x plus y times 1. That is the derivative, partial derivative of m with respect to y. Now I'm going to find the partial derivative of n with respect to x. So the first term, 2y is a constant, second term is 2x, negative 1, take the derivative, you get 0. You have a 2 in common, so 2 times x plus y. So my is equal to nx. This would mean the salute, excuse me, the equation is exact. So we could either use m or we could use n. I think I am going to use m. So, which would be approach one. So f of x comma y would equal to the integral of m of x comma y times dx. I'm integrating with respect to x. And of course, we would have a constant of integration, which would be g of y. So the integral of x plus y squared with respect to dx, um, you can expand it or foil it, then integrate, or use u substitution. It will be easier. So if I set u is equal to x plus y, I have to take the derivative of u with respect to x, which would simply give me 1. So du would equal to dx. I could rewrite the integral of u squared as u squared du and the constant of integration g of y. What is the integral of u squared? It's u cubed over 3 plus g of y and putting our substitution back we have x plus y cubed over 3 plus g of y. Now, if you want to foil and proceed, that's entirely up to you. But I think that this is easier. Um, now that we found f, we have to find the constant of integration. So we have to take f and find the partial with respect to y. And that would equal n. So you just have to remember the order, you know, if I use m, what comes later? What is the constant of integration? If I use n, what is the constant of in, uh, integration? And how is that used to find uh, the constant of integration and so forth? If you remember that order, it doesn't matter which approach you use, you'll just be fine. So. Um, I am going to take the partial of y
partial of f with respect to y and that would equal to n and n in our case is 2xy plus x squared minus 1. So the partial derivative here again if I use chain rule I would get 3 times x plus y squared over 3 plus g prime of y equals 2xy plus x squared minus 1. The 3s would go away and I will have x plus y squared plus g prime of y equals 2xy plus x squared minus 1. g prime of y would equal 2xy plus x squared minus 1 minus x plus y squared. By the looks of it, it seems like if I foil the last term, things are going to cancel. So let's see. 2xy plus x squared minus 1 minus x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. Distribute that negative sign, 2xy plus x squared minus 1 minus x squared minus y squared minus 2xy. Naturally, that and that would go away, that and that would go away, and we simply have minus 1 minus y squared. If I integrate... g prime of y, I am going to get g of y so integral of g prime of y with respect to y would equal integral negative 1 negative y squared times dy which is negative y negative y cubed over 3. So we take that and plug it back in our expression which we derived up here for f so f of x comma y would equal to c so the solution f of x comma y is x plus y cubed over 3 plus g of y which is what we found here minus y minus y cubed over 3 equal to c. This is an initial value problem so we have an initial condition so if we use the initial condition uh, which is y of 1 is 1, we can solve for the constant of integration c. So since y of 1 is equal to 1, I'm going to plug in the values here. 1 plus 1 cubed over 3 minus 1 minus 1 over 3 equals c. So 8 over 3 minus 1 minus 1 over 3 would equal c and if we simplify we will get 8 over 3 minus 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3 equals c which would imply c is 4 over 3. So the solution is x plus y cubed over 3 minus y minus y cubed over 3 equals c. So this is one which uses trigonometric functions. So m here 
is tangent x minus sine x sine y n is cosine x cosine y we have to take the derivative of m with respect to y so the first term is zero the second term negative sine x would be a constant and the derivative of sine y is cosine y the second function nx uh, will be cosine x cosine y the derivative um, of cosine x is negative sine x cosine y is a constant with respect to x in partial derivatives so what we have is my is equal to nx which would imply the de is exact last problem i used m so in this problem i'm going to use n to find the solution so in other words, approach two. The solution is f of x comma y equals integral n of x comma y dy plus the function, the constant of integration here is h of x. We plug in n of x comma y which is cosine x cosine y dy plus h of x since we are integrating with respect to y x is or well, function of x is a constant so we will have that integral of cosine y is sine y and we have h of x the next step is to find the constant of integration to find the constant of integration h of x Take the derivative of f, partial derivative of f, with respect to x, and that, in this case, would equal to m. If you start with n, in this step, it's going to be m. If you start with m, in this step, in this uh, in this step, it is, it is going to become n. So just know the order and pick one approach. Oftentimes. Depending on the problem, if you're wise enough, you know whether to pick M or N, and that comes with practice. Um, so I'll leave that up to you, but regardless of the approach you use, the answer has to be the same. Um, so we've found F, so the partial of F with respect to X would be cosine X sine Y plus H of X is equal to tangent of x minus sine x sine y. Now that is m of x comma y. So the partial of the first term cosine x sine, sine y would simply be negative sine x sine y is a constant plus h prime of x luckily
we have negative sine x sine y on the other side also. So h prime of x would equal to tangent x minus sine x sine y plus sine x sine y. Those two would go away. h prime of x would equal to tangent of x. Our goal now is to find the constant of integration. So integrate h of x, oops, h prime of x to get h of x. Um, back to calculus here. Integral of h prime of x dx would equal to integral tangent of x dx, which I could write it as sine x over cosine x. And here you have to use uh, substitution. So if I have u as cosine x, du would be negative sine x dx. So the integral would reduce to negative du over u. But we know du over u, the integral is ln of u. Now replace the su substitution, we'll get h of x equal to negative ln of cosine of x. We'll take that value and plug it in our expression that we derived up here for f as the solution. So we have cosine x sine y minus ln of cosine x equals c. That would be our solution. So here is an interesting problem where we have a de and we want to find the value of k which would make this particular equation an exact equation. So what we know is we know m which is y cubed plus kx y raised 4 minus 2x n is 3xy squared plus 20x squared y cubed and a de is exact if the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the partial of n with respect to x so let's take and find take the partial of m with respect to y. We will get 3y squared plus kx times 4y cubed. The derivative of 2x, partial derivative of 2x with respect to y is 0. So we leave it as is. Now if we move on to the partial of n with respect to x. The first term. 3y squared is a constant, derivative of x is 1, so we have 3y squared. The second term, uh, 20y cubed is a constant, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. So we have 3y squared plus 20y cubed times 2x, so which I could write as 40xy cubed. So the required condition is partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. So let's set these equal to each other and solve for k. So 3y squared plus 4kxy cubed would equal 3y squared plus 40xy cubed. Those two would go away. 4kxy cubed would equal 
x, y cubed, the y cubed would go away, x would go away, we'll have 4k equals 40, which would imply k equals 10. So if k is 10 in this particular expression, then the equation would be exact.